Hello, it's Saturday the 14th of November. You're tuned in to our 6pm newscast coming to you from Adirang's news centre in Seoul. It's very good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. And we start with a shocking terrorist attack in France. At least 153 people have been killed in multiple shootings and bomb attacks across Paris. Around 200 people have been injured, many critically. The worst bloodshed was at a rock concert after terrorists with automatic weapons took hostages and began shooting them. For the latest, we connect to our Connie Kim. Uh, Connie, walk us through what happened and what we know now. Uh, well, Mark, the terrorists struck as people were enjoying their Friday evening in the French capital. In what appears to be a coordinated attack, they struck in six separate locations across northern Paris. Now, the worst carnage happened at the Taclin Hall. At least 112 people were killed there. A rock concert was being held at the hall, which can seat as many as 1,500 people. Now, a journalist who escaped with his life told CNN that the hall was a, quote, a bloodbath. He said the terrorists calmly shot people for about 10 to 15 minutes, reloading their AK-47s when their rounds ran dry. And when the police raided the hall, four attackers were killed, three blew themselves up using belts packed with explosives, and the other was shot dead by police. Now, the attacks came as a friendly soccer match between France and Germany was underway at the National Stadium. Three loud explosions could clearly be heard inside the stadium, where about 80,000 spectators were watching the game. At least four people were killed outside the stadium, and three terrorists were killed in the attack there. People eating dinner at a popular Cambodian restaurant in the city were also killed. Now, French President Francois Hollande, who was at the soccer match, was whisked to safety. News agencies in France are quoting the police, the Paris police chief as saying that all eight assailants involved have been neutralized. Seven of them committed suicide, detonating their suicide belts. Uh, however, the authorities are stressing that the total number of attackers remains unclear. We don't know the motives of the gunmen yet, but according to BBC, one of the attackers reportedly shot at his support for the Islamic State militant group saying France shouldn't have intervened in the conflict in Syria. Now, remember, Paris is where Islamist gunmen murdered 18 people attacking a satirical magazine, Charlie Hebdo, a Jewish supermarket, and a policewoman on patrol in early January. Yes, Connie, lots of people feeling a mixture of anger and sadness that such a horrific incident could happen in Paris again. The world has been united in its condemnation of the attack. French President Francois Hollande uh, he was quick to respond, speaking to the press as the attacks were unfolding. What was his message? Uh, well, Mark, France remains on lockdown right now. Hollande has tightened border control and declared a state of emergency. It's hoped the move could stop other people responsible for the attack from fleeing the country. The French president called the attacks an abomination and a barbaric act. He also vowed to take the fight to the group. We wanted to be there among those who saw these awful things, to say that we are going to fight and this fight will be merciless. Because when terrorists are capable of such atrocities, they should know that they'll be faced with a France that's determined, a France that's united, a France which stands together, a France which will not be intimidated, even if today we're infinitely moved by this tragedy. And U.S. President Barack Obama called the attack an outrageous attempt to terrorize civilians and pledged to support France. Uh, we're going to do whatever it takes to work with the French people and with nations uh, around the world uh, to bring these uh, terrorists to justice and to go after uh, any terrorist networks that go after our people. UN Secretary General Pan Ki moon also slammed what he called despicable terrorist attacks. And Connie, Korea, of course, has very close ties with France. President Hollande himself was here not so long ago. There are also thousands of Korean nationals, uh, not only in Paris, but throughout France. Uh, they either live there, of course, or are there as tourists. How is the Korean government responding? Well, President Park Geun-hye has joined other international leaders in expressing her deepest condolences to the families of those killed in the attacks. President Park also condemned the perpetrators, calling terrorism a crime against humanity. And she, uh, she also vowed to cooperate with the international community and emphasize that terrorism should not be tolerated in any circumstance. Korea's foreign ministry held an emergency meeting earlier today, and ministry officials say no Korean nationals were killed, but they will continue to monitor the developments through the Korean embassy in Paris. Officials operate the hotline with, 
with France shortly after the attack, and employees at the South Korean embassy in France are now in emergency mode. The ministry also sent out text messages to some 9,000 South Koreans in France, urging them to be extra careful. Well, this is all I have for now. I'll bring you more updates in our later newscast. Thank you, Connie. Now, in other news, President Park Geun-hye left for a 10-day trip this Saturday that will take her to Turkey, the Philippines and Malaysia. The Korean leader will be attending a string of multilateral summits where she's expected to meet with her counterparts from major countries. Hwang sang reports. President Park's first stop will be in Turkey for the annual summit of the Group of 20 Advanced and Emerging Economies. The focus will be on finding ways to coordinate policies among the G20 partners for inclusive and robust growth. The leaders are also set to review the progress of their growth strategies laid out at last year's meeting in Australia, where they set a goal of 2 percent increase in combined GDP by 2018. Next stop, the Philippines for the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Leaders from APEC's 21 member economies, including the United States, China and Japan, will discuss ways to build inclusive economies and sustainable and resilient communities. APEC accounts for nearly 60 percent of global gross domestic product and almost half of world's trade. Final stop, Malaysia for a summit with ASEAN and its three Northeast Asian partners, South Korea, China and Japan. President Park plans to work on deepening cooperation with 10 ASEAN member nations, identified as the foundation for future growth engines. She will also attend the East Asia Summit, composed of ASEAN and eight other countries, including the U.S. and China, to outline Seoul's stance on North Korea's nuclear ambitions. With Japan's prime minister also scheduled to attend the string of multilateral summits, President Park's 10-day tour could provide the leaders a chance to continue talks after their previous meeting earlier this month. Hwang sang Arirang News. The United States has expressed its support for President Park and Hay's latest call for Japan to speed up efforts to resolve the issue of its military sexual enslavement of Korean women during World War II. The Korean leader made the remarks in a joint written interview this week with eight members of the Organization of Asia Pacific News Agencies. President Park and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe agreed to speed up negotiations on the so-called comfort women issue at a summit in Seoul early this month, but no progress has been made since. A spokesperson for the U.S. Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs said Washington wanted to see Korea and Japan settle the sensitive issue in a timely manner. Historians estimate around 200,000 women, mostly Korean, were forced into sexual slavery by the Japanese army in the early to mid-20th century. The Chinese yuan is set to join the UK, the US dollar rather, British pound, euro and Japanese yen as the fifth currency in the International Monetary Fund's so-called special drawing right basket. IMF head Christine Lagarde said the fund's executive board will decide on November 30th whether to add the Chinese currency to the fund's unit of accounting, but that she supported personally the move. The yuan's inclusion could clear the way for central banks around the world to hold more of it in their reserves. Beijing has been pushing hard for the yuan to join the big league of global currencies, making it one of the highest priorities for its next five-year plan, which starts on January 1st. Korea's labor unions and civic organizations are holding a large-scale rally in central Seoul to protest uh, in protest, rather, of labor reform measures, youth unemployment, and the government's plan to adopt state-issued history textbooks for secondary school students. An, an estimated 100,000 people from 53 labor unions, including the Korea Confederation of Trade Unions, gathered from 4 p.m. local time in Seoul's Gwanghamun Square. The KCTU says a demonstration was organized to urge the government to scrap its plans to reintroduce state-authored history textbooks starting in 2017. Now, the National Police Agency says it will take any illegal action very seriously and deal with any cases accordingly. If you are uh, driving through the centre of Seoul tonight, please keep in mind that there may be some road closures and heavily congested streets due to that protest.
Now, mukbang or eating shows have been and still are a big fad here in Korea, and watching shows like these can make you pretty hungry at times. But experts say that before running to the fridge, people need to be sure they're not in the grip of so-called fake hunger pangs. Our Park Se-young has a story. About four hours after we eat, our body signals to the brain that we're hungry. That's because ghrelin, the hunger hormone, is released in the stomach and stimulates appetite. But there are also times when we crave food, even when the stomach isn't empty. Feeling hungry when watching someone else eat or looking at food that's appealing is a phenomenon known as fake hunger. The sight of food can stimulate the hypothalamus and secret ghrelin, which is why looking at food makes you want to eat it. Fake hunger is also caused by stress. The stress hormone cortisol boosts the secretion of ghrelin, leading to emotional eating. The body confronts an excessive amount of stimuli in our society. If hunger hormones continue to enhance appetite, even when we're not hungry, it can become problematic in managing health. Experts say people who are under a lot of stress and aren't getting enough sleep need to take extra precautions against the lure of fake hunger in order to maintain healthy eating habits. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Now, a band of smog from China is forecast to start affecting the Korean peninsula from Sunday. Large parts of northeast China have been blanketed with acrid smog for the past week or so. Levels of PM 2.5, airborne particles less than 2.5 micrometers in diameter, considered most harmful to health because they can lodge themselves so deeply in your lungs, have reached nearly 300 micrograms per cubic meter. In Beijing, you're seeing scenes from the city there. That's 12 times higher than the World Health Organization's recommended maximum of 25 micrograms. And that's all we have for now. Do enjoy the rest of your Saturday wherever you're watching us and stay tuned to Arirang TV. We'll be back with our next newscast at 10 p.m. Korea time. Until then, goodbye.